Uh, I mentioned to you yesterday, friends, that uh, I had a guest this week who pastor is First Baptist in Houston, Texas, a congregation of 5,000, and he ordered 5,000 of these for his people. He was so impressed with it. It really is a remarkable book. Little book, but full of excellent uh, teaching with regard to dealing with um, stress, strain, adversity, uh, dark nights of the soul. Uh, it's, it's terrific. And I, I, I thought as I was reading it about Jesus' words, you know, he didn't come for healthy people, he came for sick people. So uh, you're going to want your copy. Once again, here's the coordinates just in case you missed them. 1-800-265-3100 is the phone, phone number or you can log on to crossroads.ca. In Canada, you can write us at Post Office Box 5100, Burlington, Ontario, L7R 4M2. And in the U.S., you can write us at Post Office Box 486, Niagara Falls, New York 14302. And remember, your best ministry gift, friends, this is a quid pro quo. You scratch our back, we scratch yours. That's how it works for 35 years, a very successful formula as uh, we have uh, the ultimate, if, if you will, in Canadian viewer-supported television without commercial money. Mm. So thanks for that. George Ver Verwer really doesn't need much of an introduction to a lot of you, friends. Uh, you know about Operation Mobilization, you know about the ships, you know about the worldwide ministry, but this may be the first time you have a chance to st sit down with him and uh, hear from him, as it is my first time. Welcome, George. Heard a, lot of, here. heard a lot about you in your famous jacket. Mm. This, th this jacket you, you, you auction, I hear? Sometimes, yeah. I've been wearing this for about 30 years, and I give them away. But I gave one to the ship once, and they were in a fundraising event to buy our new ship. Yeah. And they auctioned it. Usually you get 500, 1,000, yeah. yeah. 2,000 generous people. This lady gave $90,000. Uh, so that was, uh, I'm glad I left that jacket behind. <laughs> it's a jacket with the world on it, right? Yeah. And, and you, you have somebody who produces these for you? Yeah, well, there's a little company in the States. We discovered them about 30 years ago. I think we're their biggest customer. <laughs> I, I carry them all over the world. Often I present one to someone to acknowledge what they've done for global missions. Now, just for the sake of those who are meeting you for the first time, and even those who want an update, uh, just give me a kind of a thumbnail sketch of the scope of Operation Mobilization. Well, it's over 50 years now, and it's grown, so there's about 6,000 of us in 110 nations. I'm no longer the leader. I led it for about 46 years, helped start it when three of us went to Mexico. About 160,000 have been with us since then as we specialized initially in short term, and then it grew into uh, a wider, longer term ministry in, in many different ways, many different countries. India is our biggest field with about 3,000 people, where we've opened 107 schools among the Dalits, the untouchables. That's one of our biggest passions. But also we've seen about 3,000 churches uh, born and come together at the same time. Well, we, when you mention India, of course, Joseph D'Souza is well known to many. Uh, One of my closest friends. Is that right? Yeah. From India. And he wrote the foreword to this book, Drops from a Leaking Tap, a very interesting book that George, I think, is humbly entitled because he's a leaking tap, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I talk about my own brokenness, my failures, my stupidity, and that's my big fear now as an older person is the SSS. You've heard about the SSS. No. It's big, yeah. Senior, stu senior stupidity syndrome, oh, so oh, be careful. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know, Frank, I was, I was quite uh, surprised, and it was re really refreshing when I was reading your book, at, at your... Uh, uh, openness to your own uh, failings. Uh, why did you feel it was important to be that vulnerable? Well, I've been reading the Bible ever since my conversion. I came to Christ in a Billy Graham meeting in New York City. I'm not from a Christian background. My mother's side, my grandfather was a drunk. She divorced him. My other side, my grandfather was an atheist from the Netherlands. My dad also from the Netherlands. And it was through Billy Graham's ministry, not only I came to Jesus, but as I read his honesty, especially about sex, what the Bible says about sex, here he was saying that in the 50s. And as I struggled with pornography and lust of the eyes, I made that decision to be open about this and to get help and to walk in the light with people. So. Well, and, and you know, as I'm reading your, your comments about your, uh, your, your sexual challenges, I thought, well, every, every man uh, to uh, one degree or another uh, walks that road with you. And I, I know that the number one cha um, use of the internet is is for porn. It's horrendous. Uh, and and you know there's there's no uh, any studies have been done. There's no real difference between those outside the church and those inside the church with regard to porn addiction. Yeah. Well, I think within those who are committed disciples, who are, and I'm involved with a lot of those kind mm -hmm. of people, there is definitely a higher level of, of victory. Yeah. In my own life, it's been 
largely victory. The internet, which I'm on all the time, I've never watched a single yeah. porno yeah. photo. I have to be more careful of just, uh, you know, magazines that somebody leaves behind in the train because I don't want to use my money for it. But there is victory, but also people have to understand radical grace when you fail, when you sin. You know, he's faithful and just to forgive you. Yeah, it's got to be both. You make that point. Uh, you, you quote uh, Chuck Swindoll uh, talking about grace and others. You, and, and it's interesting, there's been a number of guests here in the last few months who are kind of rediscovering grace. Uh, it's, it's interesting we should rediscover it. It's always been there. Yeah. <laughs> that happened in my life. Yeah. Know, partly through his writings and the writings of Philip Yancey. But like you said, it was always there. Yeah. Well, there, there you go. George, um, you started out, as you say in your book, with a, with a focus on evangelism, you you were you, you were you practiced what you preached. You were you were keen to hand out tracts. You you preached in public squares. You 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 were a, a real zealous evangelist. You, you talk in the book about how later on, and maybe it's just in the past decade or so, you've discovered the uh, importance of uh, social justice as well. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that because that's one of the biggest things on my heart to get people to understand that these two things can come together. And I always believed in social justice, but I thought some groups are called to that. We're called to discipling, church yeah. planting. We've yeah. got more than enough on our mm -hmm. plate, plus always battling to find the money. Yeah. But 10 years ago, through reading, through prayer, through the influence of people like Tony Campalo and, and Samuel Escobar and the Lausanne Congress in the mid 70s said these have to come together. I was there and it didn't register for OM, but through Joseph D'Souza and others, the old founder who people thought would never change, the lights went on. These, these can come together. And so now all over the world I speak about AIDS, the water crisis, I speak about the environment, I speak about the unborn, especially speak a lot about global poverty, and at the same time bring in the priority message of the gospel. And that's been one of the most exciting things in my life. And it's one of the reasons I'm so motivated uh, even though I'm not in any major leadership anymore. Well, you've got a whole chapter in here. I'm just trying to find it. Uh, yeah, the on, seven scourges. That's right, the seven, yeah. the seven scourges. I've changed it to the seven people yeah. laying by the side of the road, and I use Luke, Luke 10. Yeah, yeah. Good and, Samaritan. And I was, uh, you know, I, I was really pleased to see you uh, uh, mentioning uh, HIV because that's an area that I'm very concerned about and very involved in. Uh, in Southern Africa. But uh, I was interested, you mentioned this in passing, but a little bit more. No one would have thought that George Verber would talk about the environment. Uh, a lot of um, um, Protestant evangelical Christians uh, think that that's uh, not an issue for them. I think it's a great mistake because it's, it's in the Word of God. This is God's creation. We love God. We love His creation. Most of us enjoy the mountains and we yeah. enjoy nature. So why should we not be concerned about its destruction? I'm not saying it's an easy road. Vinath Ramachanga, a great theologian, a theologian from Sri Lanka, influenced me. We were speaking together at Urbana, and this is an Urbana year. Mm -hmm. Everybody ought to go. And we have to have meetings before we go to Urbana. And when Vinath shared his views on the environment, and then later I saw his book, that with any other things, in, in, really influenced me. I believe there's a down, there's a balanced, sensible road that we can follow. We'll not all be the same, and we need to avoid any kind of, you know, harshness or judgmentalism. Yeah, for sure. Now, tell me about Operation World. I, I didn't realize this, this major tome of, uh, it's a, basically a prayer guide for uh, praying for the world, uh, was an OM uh, originator. Yeah, an OM partnership with WEC and Patrick Johnson, who gave us the previous edition. Yeah. I found the old book in the 70s. It didn't sell. Bookshops even returned them. I gave it to my director of publishing. It was called Send the Light at that time. I said, this is a key book. Let's put a new cover on it. Let's push it. Of course, OM has thousands of people around the world, hundreds of thousands of prayer partners. So if we push something, it happens. And now the last, I don't know how many editions in many languages has gone way beyond one million copies. This is the brand new edition. This is so important that when they had that big Cape Town Lausanne event mm. about two years ago, this was just coming off the press. They sent him air freight to Cape Town mm. because they knew this is the book that, that Christian leaders want to get their hands on. George, uh, just about uh, two and a half minutes left. Uh, you started from scratch. You were just a young guy, a real zealous evangelist. Uh, today you're in your, what, early 70s? 74, as a couple of days ago. Whoa, whoa, 74. That's amazing. You, you look 54. God will open the door at 74. <laughs> it even rhymes. But, but when, you, when you reflect on uh, 50 years plus of, of ministry, and you remember the old days, 
Uh, now you've gone through more than one, one or two or three ships. I don't know how many ships you have now. You've got uh, hundreds of thousands of people involved with you. You've reached millions of people with the gospel. A billion, actually. It's it been a billion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there you, a billion. Well, hey, hello. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about that? I, you know, at, at, the, at this stage in your life, do you look back on this with, with gratitude, with, with uh, justifiable pride, uh, with humility? What, what? How do you see it? I just give thanks to the Lord. I've always been a team player. God gave me a tremendous team. He taught us how to repent. He taught us how to walk in the light. He gave us books like Roy Hessian's Calvary Road, and it just spread. It was like a revival movement, also the work of the Holy Spirit as we embrace many different things happening in the body of Christ on a much wider range than the average organization. So I'm actually here speaking at the biggest Pentecostal Congress almost in the whole of Canada, Indians mm -hmm. from all over North America. But the next minute I'll be speaking in a very conservative evangelical church where they're still got their doubts about the Pentecostals. <laughs> so God uh, has blessed us. I've lived in Europe 50 years and I thank Europe for exposing my um, ugly, I had an ugly American side, a legalistic side. Uh, God had to break that and show me, you know, it wasn't a sin to have a glass of wine. Mm. It wasn't a sin back then, you know, to wear a little lipstick. And he liberated us and uh, we kept repenting and we've never moved away from the basic teaching we got from Billy Graham and many other spiritual mentors. The Bible is God's word. Yeah. We can't understand it all maybe in this life, but we can base our life on it. George's book, Drops from a Leaking, Leaking Tap, is available on his website. George- Free. Free, right. <laughs> How's that for a deal? Uh, GeorgeVerwer.com. So you, you log on there and ask for your copy of Drops from a Leaking Tap. And if it's the first time visiting their site, uh, you, you, it won't be your last time. This is a remarkable, vital ministry that's going on. And George has trained others, and now he's able to be free to just do what he does. But uh, OM is a force to be reckoned with. Thanks, George. Thank you. We'll be back with more right after this, friend.